Hello, and welcome to Daily Coffee on Unsafe Space with Carter and Carrie. Today is Monday, October 21st. And actually, we should say hello to everyone except Twitter, who has banned our friend Mikey the Harlow, who's been on uh, our show several times on Deprogrammed and Daily Coffee. I'm sorry, I'm getting right into it, Carter. I'm just, you know, no, I'm mad. Right it. Um, <laughs> there, was, there was some other stuff we wanted to talk about, but this Mikey thing happened, and uh, man... So, yeah, Mikey, if you, if you don't know who he is, we've got videos with him. We'll put some links to videos we've done with Mikey in the past um, in the show notes here so you can go watch or listen. But Mikey uh, is, can I, say, can I say who he is quickly before yeah. you tell what happened? Yeah, yeah. Mikey is um, one of the most authentic and kind and passionate and like courageous people that I've met in this whole process of leaving the SJW left. Um, and we met through a mutual friend, um, who's also really brilliant. And, uh, but we met and we became good friends. And then we did the walk away interview together in DC on, um, Gavin McGinnis's now defunct show, whatever that was. And, uh, just over time I've watched him. He's, he's kind of just become this fearless voice who's speaking out against, the SJW intrusion into the LGBT community and how, you know, there are all these activists who claim to speak on behalf of gays um, are really only speaking on behalf of their ideology. They're not speaking on behalf of gay people. And, you know, he's been sort of the face of this changing, uh, you know, uh, what, what would I say? People, he, he's been, in a way, he's been the face of the LGBT walkaway movement because I know he did some panels with Brandon Strzok, the creator of that movement. And uh, he, because of it, he's caught a lot of flack. And this isn't the first time he's caught flack. This is just the most egregious time or most egregious thing I've seen happen. I'm not being very articulate this morning. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, it's fine. I mean, my, Mikey, he's, uh, he's effective, which is why they, they don't like him, right? He, people he's effective. Him speak, know that he's you can tell that he's authentic. He's not being mean spirited. He he loves everyone. He's not he's not uh, transphobic, right, or anything like that. But um, he brings up some facts and has some opinions that don't mesh well with the radical trans arm of the leftists. And for that, he's hated. So maybe we should set some context. I, I have a few examples of some tweets that he posted in the, the days leading up to the ban, although these tweets were not cited as reasons for ban. Just to be clear, this isn't, these weren't what Twitter cited. Um, but you can imagine how Twitter feels about him <laughs> based on these tweets. So one, he says, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people want to be treated the same as everybody else. Radical alphabet people want to be treated differently. This is a key distinction. And that is why sane LGBT individuals take such exception to the latter category. Okay. So there's nothing wrong with that. That's an opinion that you may or may not agree with, but it doesn't break terms of service at all. And you know, Twitter doesn't like it. Right. Right. So again, he also likes sharing facts that are inconvenient. So he writes, good news. There's not an epidemic of trans people being murdered. That's this sounds, that sounds good, right? Uh, five out of every 100,000 Americans are the victims of homicide but only 1.1 out of every 100,000 trans people are the victims of homicide. About 20 to 25 trans people killed each year. 51 Americans are struck by lightning each year. So he's saying, hey, there's not an epidemic of trans violence. I, I suppose if you support trans people or people generally, that's a good thing. There's not an epidemic of violence there. Um, it's not he, a good thing for the ideologues, for the activists who want to spread the, the opposite narrative. Right, they I want there to be lie. fear and they want there to be a crisis. It's just like they gin up all the, oh, there's, there's so many Nazis, and mm -hmm. everyone who voted for Trump is racist, because yeah. we're a country full of racists. Like They want you to see boogeymen where there aren't any boogeymen. Um, another one he's got, uh, he talks about how sometimes he feels, I won't read the whole thing, but sometimes he feels androgynous and uh, emaciated, sometimes more like a 90s computer hacker, blah, 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 and he writes at the end, guess what? That doesn't make me my own special gender, okay? So as a gay man speaking about how he feels different ways certain times still still doesn't make him a new gender. Um, and then he, the last one I'll just 
talk about to get a sense of what he talks about here. He says 0.3 to 0.6 percent of the population is transgender, the vast majority of whom just want to be seen as a man or woman. Quote, nine binaries cannot account for more than 0.1 percent at most, yet we need to alter the English language and change how we speak to appease 0.1 percent of radicals. No. And he says hashtag pronouns day. We covered pronouns day <laughs> last week. So, you know, he talks about pronouns being derogatory terms, it, othering people. I think Carrie mentioned that last time um, when, you, when we covered pronouns day. Carrie, you mentioned that. So this is the kind of stuff that he tweets about. None of that's against their terms of service. None of it is harassment. None of it is hate speech. It's just opinions that are wrong think. Yeah, he doesn't engage in, like, the name calling or ad hominem. He doesn't engage in harassment. He doesn't. And so, but, but they don't like that he is... They would prefer to have people on the platform who do those things that they can point to and say, see, that's what, I mean, that, and they would prefer to have actual, actual, um, uh, hateful people like Richard Spencer on the platform. They, he's still on Twitter because they can point to that and say, that's, that's the Nazis we're talking about, you know? Who we don't ban. Who we don't that's ban. How bad the people are that we ban. Right. So they, but they ban people like Mikey, I think for a couple of reasons, He's got a, his following is small enough that they think they can get away with it and they test the waters by doing one of these bands and they see how much of a pushback they get. Yep. Um, it's small enough that they think they can get away with it, but it's big enough and it's growing fast enough that they don't like it. They don't want him becoming bigger. And so- And, and he's starting to get influential in among the wrong circles. Among the Democrats, gay and lesbian Democrats are starting to pay attention to him and that's dangerous. Right. And, and like you said, the other reason is because he's authentic. He's, he's, he is effective at get, help, helping to wake people up and open their eyes to certain things. And he's also authentic and people can feel that, that authenticity about him and they don't like that. That's my gut. And I bet you, when I started thinking about this, I'm like, this isn't the algorithm. This is no, there's no algorithm that would do this. No. This, this is a, a Twitter employee or several Twitter employees who decided, let's take him out. And let's see how big the pushback is. Like some tyrannical SJW at Twitter did this. Yep. And is waiting to see if they can get away with it. And so far they have. And, yeah. and, and it looks like they will, unless we fight. And this is a battle that Karen and I both want to fight uh, as much as we can. Because, by the way, if you want to tag people, he's, he was Mikey the Harlow. We'll put that link below, even though it'll link to a suspended Twitter account. But, Mikey you know, the Harlow and the hashtags are free, hashtag free Mike Harlow. And there was another one. We'll look it up. We'll put it in the bottom. But, but he, um, let me say something about, about this and how they, how they get away with it. Mikey and I were talking this morning and they've done this to other people. They did this to uh, independent journalist, Nick Monroe. They completely banned him with no reason whatsoever and they never gave a reason. And he was effective. That's, that's it. He was effective and he was authentic. Um, if you look back to one of the first big bannings they did, they banned Milo Yiannopoulos. And what, what happens when they ban you and they take your account down? Well, you can't go and find those tweets that were supposedly awful. In, my, in my, Milo's case, they told, they told a narrative of he was uh, racially harassing, racially targeting Leslie Jones. And it's funny because now whenever you see people accept that as fact and as a built-in part of a narrative that's true. And so you see articles now that say Milo, who was kicked off, he's so bad, he was kicked off Twitter for racially targeting Leslie Jones. Where are the tweets that prove that? There are no tweets that prove that. And, and they don't feel a need to quote those tweets. They just say it now as if it's true, racially targeting. How? Where's the evidence of that? Right. Um, I, I saw those tweets that he was making at the time. He was not racially targeting her. He made a joke about her looking like a man. And it was also a joke about how he dates black men. Now, you may not like that joke and you may find it distasteful, but he wasn't racially targeting her. No. Um, and so th these things just become lies. And so the reason why it's important is this. Like, I, we, I, we all ho I hope Twitter dies. I hope these big platforms die. I hope something else comes up in its place. But while they're still the dominant ones, there's this fear. People that are uh, who do who do podcasts, who do um, YouTube series, who are independent journalists like Tim Pool, they rely on these major platforms. And so, take Milo again as a case study. Milo had a million followers on Facebook, something crazy. 
they kicked him off Twitter, then they kicked him off Facebook. So how do those people find you again? They have to be really motivated, those million fans, to connect with you again. These major platforms basically own your fan info. That's why getting email addresses and stuff is so important. But even when you get those email addresses of the people who want to subscribe to your stuff, it's like, it's people don't like going to third-party sites. They prefer to read and engage with your content on the platforms they already go to, like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. So like a little channel like, like Mikey or like us, if we get kicked off, we don't have that. If, if Milo can get silenced and relegated to Telegram and a, a fra only a fraction of his audience comes, imagine what happens with small channels that don't have a million followers that have 2,000 followers like us. It's like if we got banned from Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, well, we're still on BitChute. Well, how do we tell people we're on BitChute? We're, we can't go on Facebook and tell them that. We can't go on Twitter and tell them that. Um, it's a it's a way to completely erase your voice from the public square, and it's a form of, of it's an abuse of power. It's tyrannical, and you know what? It's it's exactly what they say what they say Mikey was doing, which is a, a complete lie. They offered no evidence of it. They said uh, engaged in targeted harassment. That's what they're doing. They're doing targeted harassment of people like Mikey, of people who are wrong thinkers, and everybody who's. I know I'm on a rant, but I'm at the end of it. The, there are a lot of people who uh, are afraid to are afraid to highlight these things when they happen because they're afraid of getting banned. They're afraid of being targeted, and I and and they have potentially a lot of them probably have they have more followers and they're afraid of losing all that. Get over that fear. It's going to happen to you eventually anyway. Like I'm going to be banned eventually anyway. So why would I sit here and be a coward until that happens? Like. I mean, I know we're going to be banned. So go ahead and talk about what they're doing. Don't be a chicken. That's all. That's my rant. <laughs> no, it's a good, it's a good rant. Um, you know, the only thing I, I would add is I know there's a lot of people who think the answer is, is regulation. I would argue that um, not only this, is this abuse of power from companies like Twitter, it's also fraudulent because when people join the platform, they are told that this is uh, a free for all intellectually and that you'll only be banned for you know violating these rules and what they don't tell you is that they will just claim you violated the rules even if you haven't and you have no recourse and that's the end so they they do just go after you and ban you whenever they want for whatever reason they want and so let's let's go through carrie the first thing mikey got as far as i'm i know the first message he got from them was he was banned because he was trying to evade permanent suspension by having multiple accounts, which he doesn't have. He doesn't have multiple accounts. Never had another account. I just, I asked him this, like never been on Twitter with another account, only ever had this account. Yeah, he totally had, fraudulent. He it actually was, had, for clarification, he opened an account years ago that he can't even remember the name of. It was gonna be a parody comedy account and he never tweeted anything from it at all. Oh, I see. He said he and didn't that's it. having any when I asked him. But well, okay. I mean, because he doesn't use it. It's like, how would he, it, it, I, he had to dig back to even remember having that. And I was like, you know what, if this is a legitimate thing, well then this is what they're going to use to ban me because I have, I run the unsafe, I sometimes post from the unsafe space account. I have my personal account. I have the civility dinners account. I have a, a um, I used to I have this defunct account called philosophy fodder. I, I used to try and tweet like philosophy quotes from it. Um, of, of course they're, oh, you've got multiple. I used to run a bunch of comedians accounts. So my IP address is, tech, you know. They're all tied to your phone. They're all tied to, oh, and imagine, you know what they would say? She had 10 accounts. <laughs> like, it's like, right. yeah. But right. Because <laughs> a lot of people have multiple accounts, but they're not, they're not repeat. They're not trying to evade suspension. They right. have different projects. They're in, they're, they're working. They're different on. projects. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so that's, so they said he was trying to evade permanent suspension. And they didn't justify that, although I guess maybe they could say, hey, you one time had this thing. But then the, the other answer, the other thing they gave, then they started like, they, I think he ended up getting three notifications about why he was banned. The, the one that bothers me the most, Carrie, um, is this one where they say that he violated, he, violation specifically for violating our rules against abuse and harassment. You may not engage in the targeted harassment of someone or incite other people to do so. This includes wishing or hoping that someone experiences physical harm. Okay, ready? Here's the- I know, this is awful. He wrote at uh, this woman named Bridget, at Bridget, so he's responding to her. Oh my God, she loves her children, question mark, exclamation point, question mark, exclamation point. So 
It's like sarcastic, overtly sarcastic. Oh my God, she loves her children. Burn the witch with some exclamation points. Now, he doesn't really remember the context of this too much. I went through this, this person's tweets and she, there's a couple times where like she talked about Megan Kelly loving her children and mocking Megan Kelly. And then she said something about loving children. It's not, he doesn't remember what he was responding to. But the point is, you don't need a lot of context here to see. He's not harassing the person he says burn the witch about. He's defending, defending her. Them from the mob who wants to harass them. It's the opposite. The opposite of abuse and harassment is rushing to the defense of someone who's being abused and harassed. That's what he's doing with this tweet. And that's the tweet that they're citing as violation of their rules. It is unconscionable. Yeah, and they know what they're doing. I got in, uh, I talked about this with someone in the comments on Twitter. They're like, how do you know this isn't the algorithm? It seems exactly like the kind of out of text, out of context thing that algorithm. I was like, no, because they didn't give him a reason the first day or, you know, if this was like the third email, it took, they, some employee went and dug back through his tweets and couldn't find anything objectionable. So they took this and they know what he means. Of course they know they what he know means. What Every he means. person in the world knows what he, means. what he means. Yeah, so I, the context of it, yeah, I, I forget who it was too. I thought it was Ivanka Trump, but it was basically some woman on the right who was talking about how she loved her kids and all these leftists piled on her on Twitter and were like, how dare you talk about your beautiful kids when kids are at the border in right. detention camps? Right. And like Mikey that. goes, oh my gosh, she loves her kids, burn the witch. Like that's obviously, he's coming to her defense. He's not harassing her. That's insane. Yes. And right. It is unconscionable because they know, they know what that tweet means. And it's not an algorithm because his appeal was denied and appeals go through humans. Yeah. So a human looked at it and denied his appeal. So he's being targeted by an employee or several employees at Twitter. Yes. I wish we knew who those employees were. Absolutely. I would want to name them. Like Naming them. Them. Yes. yes. Right. Absolutely. Um, the fact that they can kind of fade into the, the faceless bureaucracy at Twitter and never get called out is a problem. And by the way, if you want to, if you want to do something about, if you want to tag people, you can tag, you should always tag Twitter support. You can tag Jack. I don't know if that matters. He probably has someone looking at this stuff on his account. Also, uh, Vijaya, I don't know how to say her name, Vijaya, V-I-J-A-Y-A. -A. That's, the, that's the lawyer that appeared on Joe Rogan with Jack Dorsey about when they were talking about uh, this banning of people for no reason. So, oh, they did it to Megan Murphy, too. Just yes. dropped her down the memory hall. Yep. No reason, except she said, men are men. That's it. <laughs> Out yep. of here permanently cut off your contact with your subscribers completely. Yeah. I, to be honest, Carrie, I'm not really on Gab. I mean, we're on Gab, but all we do on Gab is post our videos. We don't really engage too much on Gab. We it's just repost. want to engage more on Gab. Just, yeah. Uh, well, because Gab, nobody, nobody's going to the, alt what if everybody at once was like, here's what we're doing. Like, what if after, uh, you know, any of these major bannings, instead of people being so afraid and trying to hold on to their little corner, what if everybody said en masse, we're going to this other platform and we're going to yeah. try and make this other platform work? I, I think people that have large followings um, and don't care too much about those followings, and an example might be Trump, maybe post-election, he shouldn't care too much about his following. Uh, they should they should be the leaders to do that because if you get a few big people to just all switch and and they can't just start going on other platforms they have to delete their twitter accounts and be like we're off twitter we're on we're only on the other platforms i think you might have a, a critical mass but it's not just twitter right apple has banned there's no gab app you have to go like on your iphone you've got to go you know how you can make an app out of a web page that's what you have to do on your iphone you have to go like use the use gab on the web and you can make a little uh, hot link to a web page um, as if it's an app on your on your iPhone. That's what you have to do for Gab because Gab has been banned from the App Store and Gab had their developer account canceled from Apple. Um, these tech companies are deathly afraid of free speech. Deathly afraid of free speech. Um, so they're going to make it as hard as possible. And you know, I think maybe the answer is you just have to accept a little bit of inconvenience, right? Um, but I don't know. I, I don't have a I don't have a positive expectation from this Twitter thing. Do you? No, I think that they they're they are getting away with it and 
Mikey may never be reinstated and never have any valid reason why they did this. I was watching a clip of uh, Douglas Murray, the guy who wrote uh, The Madness of Crowds, which is the book a lot of people are talking about right now, which, which kind of lays out um, the architecture of some of the SJW ideology. I haven't read it yet. That's just, that's just what I, I gleaned that it's about. And I started reading the first chapter, which is great. Um, but anyway, I was watching a clip with him. And in the clip, he was talking about Google. He was actually talking about the Google image search thing, how they manipulate the results of what you're getting just to F with you. Like if you search for straight couple versus gay couple, if you search for gay couple, you get a ton and Google image search, you get a ton of happy gay couples, a lot of interracial gay couples. If you search for straight couple, you get a ton of gay couples, a ton of interracial really? gay couples. Yes. And the same thing for black and white couples. I think we did this once before. If you look for black couples, you get a lot of happy black couples. If you look for white couples, you get a lot of happy black couples and then some really um, awful, white, awful white couples. Um, and, and he's like, you know, that he was talking about that and he's like, yeah, well, they do that just because there's some, there's some human employee there who wants to, who's like, why are you looking for white couples? Who wants to make you feel like a bigot? Oh my God, I just did this. Carrie, this was it from an incognito browser, so there's no, like it's a, a fresh cache. I just did this while you were talking. You're gonna show it. Straight couples on Google. This is the search, straight couples. That's all I typed in. Not straight, that they're straight, not straight. They look straight, uh, they look straight. I can't tell there, they're not straight. They're not straight, they're not straight. They're not straight. So yeah, you type but, in straight couples, you get not straight couples because that's the beauty of the search engine. Yeah, so they're not, the, anyway, the, I'm getting a little far afield, but he was talking about the Google image thing, but in the course of talking about it, he had this, he, this, he made this aside about Twitter and ban bannings. And he said, you know, I'm paraphrasing. He said, Twitter's one of the worst or Twitter is the worst. He said, in terms of, what they say they'll ban you for and what they actually ban you for. They are the worst and, and the, the most secretive about it, you know, the most shadowy. And it just made me think of Mikey hearing that. I'm like, yeah, they are the worst. They completely, they don't feel any responsibility to answer to, uh, you, you know, people think, people think, oh, if you've been banned and, and you didn't deserve it and you didn't break the TOS, there should be, you know, of course they should let you appeal it and they should look at it in, in the right the the correct you know justice should prevail no it doesn't people right. get banned like mikey all the time and we just happen to know him but it's happened to tons of people who and, and a lot of times it's people who are just starting to amass a following and they're pulling that carpet out from under them before they can get big enough and yep. um and sometimes it's with people who've already gotten big and they and like with milo they were effective they were able to kick him off alex jones they were able to kick him off it just depends but they but they if you're sitting back thinking, well, that person's been banned, there must be a reason. There's a lot of people banned with absolutely no reason. And, and Mikey was right. We were talking about it. He said, you know, they use these things to permanently tar your reputation, just like how in the press they, they now say, as if it's fact, Milo, who's so awful, he was kicked off for racially targeting Leslie Jones. You know, Mikey's like, uh, he saw that, he said he saw that Megan Murphy was just, had some events canceled or something. And the reasoning was that she's such an extremist that she's been permanently banned from Twitter. They use the perma banning as evidence of some kind of guilt. Yes. Yeah. And, and Twitter knows that. Yeah. Um, so. And yeah. then other platforms feel safe doing it because one's already done it. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just really angry. <laughs> I'm really angry on behalf of it. And I, I wish more people would talk about it. So anyway. Again, if you guys want to tweet about it or Facebook about it, it's uh, he's at Mikey the Harlow and the hashtag is free Mike Harlow. Actually, also, if anyone has any contacts at Twitter um, that are would be sympathetic at all, um, maybe we need to start going through that route. You know, Carrie, you said something about people expecting there to be justice served. I think we're used to like, we're used to big companies like Comcast who we know like they'll be very slow about doing anything correctly, but we kind of feel like eventually the bureaucracy will come around. It'll just be, it'll be infuriating because it'll take a year to fix some mistake, right? But eventually they'll come around and correct things. That's not true with Twitter. That is not true with Twitter. They don't eventually come, and come around and correct things. There's no, there's no like ultimate 
righting of wrongs that's done here. It's literally just screw you. You're off our platform. We don't owe you a reason. And bye. Right. Well, like you said, they build themselves as a, a free speech platform and they're not. And I wonder if there's like a, a like you've talked about before, a fraud law lawsuit here. Like they're engaging in fraud. I think they're in, I think it's absolutely fraud. Um, I'm, I'm sure a lawyer would tell me that it would be a hard case to win, but I'd just like to see, frankly, someone to sue them just to see the discovery, right? Because you'd get a lot of interesting things in discovery about what the hell's going on. So, but if, if big people like Milo or Alex Jones didn't sue, um, you know, I'm not sure, I'm not a lawyer, so there's probably a, a reason, probably the thing, no one thinks it'll go anywhere, but, you know, it's time that we, we, pull back the curtain here a little bit. I don't know if you saw, speaking of lawsuits, I don't know if you saw the Trump response to the Project Veritas CNN stuff. Mm -mm. Um, Trump's lawyers are now saying that they're gonna take legal action against the CNN um, because they claim to be news and they're not. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, it's unlikely they would win anything, but again, even if they get discovery, they'll get a bunch of stuff in discovery. Um, yes. Discoveries, you know, you can get a lot of information, you can get, uh, you know, the emails that Zucker sent to people and like, you know, notes from conversations and meetings. So you can get a lot of interesting stuff. Um, someone needs to do that for Twitter. And maybe, maybe, you know, there'll be another Project Veritas video sometime on, on Twitter and someone can sue them. But, uh, you know, it's unfair. It is uh, not, not just unfair. It's also, I, I believe what Twitter's doing is, is immoral if for no other reason then they're lying to you about their platform and they're destroying these people's lives and they're destroying sources of income. Mikey was just starting to get like a little bit of money on his YouTube channel, just starting to get some notoriety, like speaking in places, like he's young and building a career and they're trying to snuff it out so that he doesn't become even more influential later. And they're doing it only because he doesn't toe the line that they believe all gays should toe the same line and have the same proper social justice opinion. And he's a wrong thinking gay man. And that's, that's, that's it. That's hard. And that's if hard. this doesn't bother you, I mean, you're probably a person who puts ideology above principles. I mean, here's the thing we've mentioned this before, but there's all these people who run around saying leftists who will say, well, private companies can do what they want. They can ban who they want. That's true. It's legal. They should have the right to, to ban who they want. And I have the right to say that it's unethical and it's immoral when you pretend that you're a free speech platform and you pretend that the only thing that'll get you banned is violating the TOS and you're lying. I wouldn't have such a problem with it morally and ethically if they were, hey, we are a leftist platform and right. we don't- No one would have joined them. Yeah, no one would have joined them if they were honest about what they are. Yes. And they so they pretend to be for free speech for everyone. That's BS. And that's what makes it makes this wrong. And something can be wrong without being illegal. And so all of you people who hide behind the well, free company, you know, companies can do what they want. Yes, they can. And you can still say it's unethical and immoral. And you can quit being a coward about it. And if you're a liberal, you should be saying it's unethical and immoral. Yeah, well, I mean, look, the the leftists who say companies can do what they want, I mean, <laughs> you can just ignore them completely because the left doesn't think companies can do what they want in any other circumstance ever. They've never, ever, ever, ever make that argument. If Twitter was banning people that they liked, they wouldn't be saying that at all. They're only saying it because uh, they think that it's a cute little way to shut you up because if you're not on the left, you might normally think that companies can do what they want and they think it's a, a cute little retort, but... Well, they think it's a cute retort, but also they, I think a lot of them truly don't separate. We've talked about this before. They, they are the SJWs left, they're Puritans, they're tyrannical. They believe that if some, they think something is immoral and unethical, it should be illegal. And yeah. so they have a hard time separating those two things because yeah. they, they want to enforce their morals through just like the fundamentalist right used to want to do. It's like- right. It's the religious right. It's the exact same thing, except for they're not the same religion. Yeah, it's religious left. Their religion just ha happens to be SJW. Yep. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I have a strong distaste for both. I don't want people telling me through the, you know, this is what you must do and must think. And that's why, you know, if you're anti-authoritarian, you're anti-authoritarian, whether, whether it's on the right or the left. But it's funny because these, these people are authoritarians. They just have a problem with authoritarianism on the right, but they're authoritarians. 
They're the, the biggest threat to this country. Like they're the biggest authoritarian threat to the country, not the people on the right. You get, totally. a, you get a person on the right stand up and say, I want an authoritarian right-leaning government or right, rightist government. Very few people will support that person. But the left, they've got a lot of power. They've got media. They've got these big tech companies. They've got academia. They have most of the government, uh, you know, the, the bureaucracy, the deep state. So it's, it, and, and many uh, uh, private institutions. So the, the left, the authoritarian left is the existential threat. So yeah, I don't like a bunch of stuff that the radical right wants either. That's also authoritarian, but they're not the big threat here. It's not Tiki Torch wielding crazy Nazi people that are the big threat. They're out there. There's not as many as the left would like you to think, but they're the boogeymen the left is using to install a draconian authoritarian government. That's what's the threat. Absolutely. Well, um, support Mikey. We're going to try and get Mikey on the show, possibly tomorrow, maybe Wednesday. We're going to try and get him on the show to talk directly to him about what's going on here um and for any updates but please tweet at twitter support uh tweet at uh jack uh the jaya anyone else that you know um at twitter if you have friends at twitter um please let us know tell them about what's going on let's not be let's not let mikey go quietly let's let's make a big stink about this and um i want to see twitter's justification i want to see someone defend that tweet, or not defend the tweet, defend the suspension of that tweet, defend the claim that that tweet is uh, harassment, targeted harassment in any way um, publicly. So with There's that, a please, part I was just looking for, I know I've mentioned this book before, it's a great book, um, Love Your Enemies. There was a part in here where he talks about, um, I couldn't find it, but he's basically talking about how if you want to have integrity and you want to be authentic, I mean, it follows necessarily that you defend people um, even and especially when they are people who disagree with you, people on the other side, whatever sides are for you, that you defend them when they're being treated unfairly. Right. And you don't make it about ideology, you make it about principles. And so for anyone, even SJWs, some of the, the ones with good intent, obviously I'm not talking to the ones with bad intent who are gleeful. There are people celebrating, there are SJWs celebrating that he got banned, who, pre who pretend to be LGBT activists and they don't care that a, a gay guy has gotten banned because they don't agree with his beliefs. Right. They don't have any principles. They put ideology up here and principles here. But for those principled people, and I do believe there are some principled SJWs who are in it for good reasons. If you're principled, you should be defending him regardless of whether you agree with him or not about trans kids or, or what have you, like you, you should be defending him and he would be defending you. That's the funny, that's the funny thing. Even if you're on the radical left, if you were treated unjustly by Twitter, he would be defending you. Yeah. And I will say for those people with large followings who know Mikey and agree with what we're saying, but are too afraid to defend him publicly, shame on you. You've got a large following, use it because you'll be next. People should also um, feel free to, if you're going to tweet in support of him, feel free to ha um, link some people with bigger followings in. Like, like I want to, some of the thought leaders and people um, uh, on the, the non-PC, you know, side, whatever, doesn't matter if they're liberal, yeah, like Tim, Tim Pool, Pool in there. Conservative, right. yeah, Tim Pool, whoever, whoever on there who has a big platform and might be interested in this story because they probably haven't heard of it. And maybe one of them will latch onto it and start talking about it. Yep, absolutely. All right. Well, thank you for, thank you for watching. Um, we'll keep you up to date on this. I know we wanted to talk about Tulsi and Clinton, but maybe we'll do that tomorrow or the next chance we get. <laughs> yes. Fun happening. Oh gosh. Tulsi and uh, the queen of warmongers. Yes. Hillary F. U. Clinton. So, I love Tulsi. Um, yeah. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like, share, subscribe. By the way, we're getting more um, anonymous one-time donations from subscribe star. Uh, so I'm um, people on subscribe star. So thank you for those of you who, uh, are doing that. Usually we reach out and ask you if you want to be anonymous. So, uh, you know, pay attention to your subscribe star messages or your email, because if you want us to shout out, we will, uh, anyway, thank you very much. And we'll see you tomorrow. I got my microphone cord fixed. Oh yeah. You should notice everyone. Carrie sounds better, right? If yeah. Sound better. Tell her. Uh, hopefully. 
Okay. Take care guys.